Okay, let's take a look at the expectation equation for uh, random variables. And here we've got a typical uh, random variable, and this is the probability density function uh, for the random variable capital X. So little f says it's the probability density function, which is a function of the random variable capital X, and we're plotting this with respect to little x. And the equation for the expectation is given here. And I just want to try and unpack that equation just to understand a little bit more about it and give a physical interpretation. Okay, so what have we got here in this expectation? Well, we have the value x, so this is the value, and then we multiplied the value by this term here. So let's try to just understand that term a little bit. And to do that, uh, let's remember about the PDF, uh, what it is in fact uh, telling us in physically. So if we, um, well, first of all, let me relabel the axes just because I think this just helps to avoid some confusion. This is a function we're plotting with respect to little x. It's for the random variable capital X. That's the random variable. And we can change the label here if we want to from x to alpha or anything else. It's just the variable that we're plotting against. So I'm just going to do that. This could be x and x, it could be alpha and alpha, whatever, uh, whatever um, symbol we'd like to use. So I just do that there to point out that that's only something that we plot against. So let me pick an exact, an actual value, and let me actually, in this case, pick little x to be the actual value. So we're going to be interested in the value of the random variable, which equals little x. So then the height here is fx of x. That's what the height is for that value of x. That is the value of the probability density function. And if we remember from the definition of that, then this value just slightly to the right, x plus dx, um, if we take that value there, in particular we take dx very, very small, infinitesimally small, then the probability of your random variable having the value, little x, so if you do a sample of your random variable, you take a measurement, uh, what's the, the probability that the outcome will be equal to little x is equal to the area of this uh, rectangle here. So and the area is exactly what we've got written down here. This is the base, so this is dx is the base, that's the distance along there, and fxx is the height. So this term here is the probability that the random variable will have a value that is bigger than x and less than x plus dx. So this expectation equation is the value itself times the probability of getting that value, because this is the probability that the outcome will be slightly bigger than little x and less than or equal to x plus dx. So it's the value times the probability of getting that value. And then the integral is you add them all up. So you do it for every single value and add them all up. So that's the way I think of the expectation equation. It's the value times the probability of getting that value added up over all the values. So how does this relate to the average? Often people use the word average for the expectation and sometimes the average is the same as the expectation. Uh, that's if the system is ergodic, and lots of systems are ergodic. But let's just think about the average, the sort of technical definition of the average. The average is a time average. Okay, so the way you work out a time average is you take lots of samples one after the other, you write them all down, you add them all up, and you divide by the number of samples. And so let's just think of that for a minute. Here's the typical, this uh, example I've drawn here, the random variable x uh, can actually take, the way I've drawn it here, this one can take negative values of, uh, of x as well as positive values. So let's think of an example like that. So for example, if there were two swimmers in a swimming pool and uh, maybe the random variable is the time that it takes uh, between the two, the swimmer in lane one and the swimmer in lane two. Okay, so let's say sometimes if, if they're scheduling a, a sporting event and uh, the faster swimmer gets put in lane one and the slower swimmer gets put in lane two, generally speaking, uh, then this would be the sort of uh, PDF that you might expect where it says 
there's more probability that lane one is faster than lane two, but sometimes lane two might be faster than lane one. You have a negative value for your random variable. So if that's, let's think of some, maybe uh, in the first case, the random variable comes out as one second. So swimmer in lane one is one second faster than swimmer in lane two. Maybe another time it's two seconds. Maybe another time swimmer in lane two is faster. Uh, maybe another time um, it's two seconds, maybe three seconds maybe back one second. These are all samples that we're taking where we're looking at the swimmers who come one after the other in a swimming carnival, for example, and we take the difference in their times. And each time a swimmer comes in, uh, we, we work out the difference and we write it down here and then we divide by the total number of swimmers. This is an average. It's a time average because we're looking over time, uh, looking over samples one after the other. We're writing them down and we're dividing by the total. And you can see that this is, in this particular example, this is exactly the same as what's happening here uh, in terms of it will turn out that way if we take enough samples in time. Okay, so the one will happen with, with a certain regularity divided by the total, that will be the proportion, that is one. The twos will happen with a certain amount of regularity, divided by the total, that's their proportion. The minus ones will happen, the threes will happen. And so exactly the same as we've got here, it's the value times the probability. This would be the value times, the in this case, the, the ratio. And so if you take this infinitely long, and if it's ergodic, then those ratios equal the probability and these two things are the same. So this is the difference between the time average, which is mostly what we mean when we say average, and the expectation. Sometimes the expectation is called the ensemble average because you're doing it for every possible value of x. It's the ensemble of possible values in this integral. And this is how it relates to the time average. So don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more videos uh, and uh, uh, share the video to help others uh, with uh, th these kind of explanations.